So what I did is that I learned where these um, companies actually get their employees from. And because I used to work at Yale University, they used to use tech systems. So they use IT staffing companies to okay. put these pipeline these people in. Reason being because then they can vet the people. Right. But then at that point, they can get them into the mantra of their business. Then at that point, I said, I have something that you will want. Certified employees. A lot of times people have bodies in their companies, but they don't have certified personnel to actually hire people that have those certifications. They get more return on their investment in that person. If they're going to go against someone like myself that has 20 years experience, it's not going to happen. But if they get you to a tech staffing agency, they can come with that um, narrative, help them out there with their soft skills, and then get them into that job. Welcome to Mission Control. At Pro to Design, we launch brands. But for now, let's launch right into this episode. Three, two, one, zero, 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 zero. Welcome to this episode of Mission Control. This is your host, Ramon Peralta with Peralta Design, and we launch brands. We've got a special show for you today, a technology show, if you will. We have the one and only Mark Lazarus, Program Manager of IT at The Workplace. Thank you so much for having me. The fans are going wild, so <laughs> thanks for being here. Of course, we've got Jorge. The number one prodigal son who's down to have fun. Wow. <laughs> he always surprises us with these new... Oh, uh, gotta, gotta, I was waiting for the banana bread one. You right. gotta, gotta <laughs> step your game up. You gotta the keep banana keep bread one had a short lifespan. Yeah. Was like, I mean, you, he hasn't, you haven't introduced this in a while, so he's been waiting. I've, I've, been, waiting. I've been teeing this one <laughs> right. up for a minute. So. Right. And of course, on the soundboard, the one and only Kevin Atterbury. Good afternoon. Okay. He's I'm gonna so give, creative. I'm going to give that a C rating. Kev just comes in. He does his job. It's a C. It's a C. It's, a C. C. it's beige. Yeah. It's the beige of intros. He's a, a, he's a PC guy, so it, all, it makes sense. Right. right. Some people like beige. Oh. Right, exactly. It's making a comeback. Everything's gray now. But anyway, man, I just got back from uh, Scottsdale. It was an awesome trip of just... Uh, I'm just glad my body held up over the course they of don't five do the, days. It's true they don't do the uh, time zone switch over there, huh? It is a time zone switch. I just I never switched myself, right? You right. Know? But because uh, I I would get up at six every day. We had tea times at like eight thirty, mm-hmm. so that's like eleven thirty here. So I'd get I'd get my whole morning you know uh, routine out of the way. But just being out in the desert for five days straight of golf um, with my chiropractor. Shout out to On Point Cairo. Uh, Mark was with us. Uh, it was just quite the experience because uh, you're in the desert, legit desert. Uh, so the ball behaves differently. Cacti, tumbleweeds. Everything. <laughs> cactus. Actually, one of the guys in our group ran into a cactus and was, his leg was full of... Uh, it's so, it's so oh. amazing how easily those little uh, spikes come off of the plant. It's oh. like, a, it's almost, it's just crazy. So he's like pulling those off his leg. You're like... In in Scottsdale or desert golf period, like when you hit your ball, not in the fairway, you just just leave it. <laughs> it's not like here, we, guys like go venturing into the woods yeah. and they're looking for. You do not do this. Literally, the Rangers would come up to us and say, uh, "There's a rattlesnake on uh, fairway number seven. Oh just God. keep an eye out." Uh, it, during this time, it was rattlesnake mating season, so they were, they were out there in numbers. Wow, and, and uh, apparently they don't do the rattle. You know how you in TV, like you hear, well, if you hear the, you know, it's like he, he, the the ranger was like, no, you make noise before you go into the bush, <laughs> because they're they're not making noise, but they will get startled, you know. So and tons of bunnies, like I didn't see any big jackrabbits, but tons of bunnies everywhere. Um, you know the 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 size. So apparently the the cactus or cacti. Those giant ones that you see that have arms, when they have arms on them, it means they're like hundreds of years old. Oh, wow. Okay. Like they don't grow those until they're hundreds of years old. But anyway, just being out there in the desert was wild. Um, fried my lips. My lips looked like uh, like turkey bacon after you put them in the oven. Because um, <laughs> I put sunblock on my face, but not Not on your lips. Mouth. I wouldn't even have thought about that. Right. Wow. So that is something to do when you go out there. <laughs> But um, crazy, crazy time there. Um, lots of golf. It's apparently, Scottsdale's apparently 
the, you know, the, the uh, bachelorette and bachelor party capital. Cause all I would see was like, you know, we'd go downtown for lunch and we'd just see like packs of dudes wearing t-shirts, all the same t-shirts, all matching shirts. which is to me is like, Gen Z all the way. Right. Yeah. And because you expect the girls to do this. So you see like girls with the matching uh, t shirts out for lunch and guys with the matching t shirts out for lunch in like these packs. And Are they still written slingshots out there too? No, no, but you know what? Speaking of technology, because we want to get to your technology segment, the have you guys heard of Waymo? Isn't that the Uber, but it, the car drives itself? It's autonomous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it was out there. Like we, 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 we were bugging out because we would see this car it was a jaguar uh you know their whatever their e-type is their electric jaguar but it was that with all kind of like cameras on it all on the bumpers on the on on the roof and there's nobody driving it wow and you see it like at a red light takes off puts the blinker on turns dropping people off people getting in so it, it's it's a thing, and it's like, like Blade Runner. Yeah, you're there. like it's wild. I don't know if I'd get in, but there were people <laughs> using people it. People are doing it, I guess. People people were using it, and of course, I'm I'm wearing my Knicks pin. All right. The Knicks are two and zero oh against the Pacers. Hopefully, by the time this airs, you know we we would have swept them. Um, but it's very very exciting time if you're a Knicks fan. Um, as long just, as Jalen Brunson can stay healthy, exactly. Just yep. he's a beast. So. Without further ado, Jorge, uh, take off with our educational segment. Sure thing. So, um, really, we just want to provide some value here. And we're excited to talk about, you know, things that are helpful to the small business owner, um, to the large business owner, just things that you should be aware of that are kind of going on in the world now. Um, and one of the bigger things that's happening currently is the change in web cookies and how you use them as, a, as an average Internet user. And what your rights are and what your responsibility is as a business owner and what you're obligated to do. So um, if you're running a bigger website, if you're running any website, but a lot of bigger sites, you're especially interested in the data. Because that's where so much of what your actions should be driven by. You don't want to be working on guesswork. You want to have solid, actionable user data to be able to make decisions. How, how long are people spending on the page? How did they get to your site? What, did they link to you from social? Did somebody, are you listed on a directory somewhere and now they ended up on your on their site that way? Did they just type in your domain directly because they saw um, a TV ad or, or, a, or a banner or a flyer so, or a, a QR code? So all the information is important, but as you start tracking people, you start collecting information on those people. And there are rules and regulations on what that, well, you know, what that happens um, and how that works. And not all, every cookie works the same. You do have some cookies that are just temporary. So you have a temporary a session cookie where you might just decide on, um, you know, whatever's happening in that moment. So whenever you log into a website, there's a cookie that mm -hmm. saves the fact that you are logged in. It's, it says that, hey, I'm logged into my email so I can I have access to see all this email. That's a temporary session cookie that'll happen. Any um, danger in somebody just saying accept all? Because so, are there some that are not good, and but we're just we just want to we just want to clear the we just want to see what's on yeah. the page. So like I often just hit accept all. Is that is there any danger in doing that? So they specifically make that the easiest path because when you hit <laughs> accept all, you right. want to be able to. It, it says I can capture all of the data Everything on you, and not only what yeah. you're doing here, but what you do on the next site and what you did on the previous exactly. site. Oh snap! So it is collecting information on everything that you everything that you do and until you clear your browser mm -hmm. it will continue to persist and continue to collect information so once you've hit select all you've already kind of signed away your rights i don't know when the a, last time i cleared my browser not, when was that <laughs> Kev? When, when, do, when do you do probably it? the last time you got a new computer no uh, yeah <laughs> so yeah, i mean i it's just I, I pretty much have a million tabs open and i never really ref well i have been refreshing chrome for salesforce so but that's still yeah your cookies yeah. are yeah, that's just my email gonna, i mean yeah. like i said if if it's all stuff that you want anyway it's yeah like, that's also the, the convenience right yeah. where you go back somewhere and it's like oh, okay you have my information you know what's going on yeah. so if you want people off. to remember what your preferences are, that sure. makes a big difference. Yeah. So let's say you're going to a site posthumously. That you, that, you mean like <laughs> when you're when you want people to remember <laughs> what your um, speaking of Lazarus, but <laughs> anyway, we'll get to that. 
let's say you're looking on Netflix and yeah. you know that you're you have a favorite genre, right? Yeah. They're gonna save a cookie that says, "All right, we're gonna push all the sci-fi stuff to the top." So right. some yeah. that's good. Some cookies you right. do like, yeah. but not every cookie is built the same. So it's important that you are just aware of what you're saying yes to. But as a business owner, you all, if you start to collect data on your audience, you have to make sure you let them know you're collecting yeah, it. Right. You have to give them the consent and you have to make sure that they have the right to opt out of it if they don't yeah. want to. If you are collecting that data without giving the without letting them opt Illegal. into it, exactly. You've yeah. you're already in breach of a number of regulations domestically. Yeah. And some people wonder, do I need it on my website? Well, that all depends on where you're located and who your audience is. A local uh domestic business that just operates in the 50 United States that has a different set of regulations than if you have international clients because yeah. the EU has a whole set of regulations yes. That says that even if you're collecting anonymous information, mm -hmm. right? Google, for example, they updated GA4 to say, I'm collecting information, but I don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. I know that this is a user in Connecticut. I don't know that it's Ramon Peralta. Yeah. In the EU, it says even if it's anonymous, you have to get people that yeah. consent. So yeah. in order to kind of cover Other your Other countries bases, tend to be a little more stricter than we are. Exactly. Yeah. So that's one of those things where you want to make sure that you – let people know that you're obtaining, that you have a record where you can obtain the consent. You can't trick them either. You can't pre-check the box. You have to right. basically give them all the information ahead of time, right. let them click. And then should any legal repercussions ever happen, you have basically the legal record that says, True. this person consented. Here's the part where they opted in. And I was clear about my messaging. And it's um, there's a number of platforms that you can use to be able to manage your cookie like that. As soon as, again... Google Analytics, uh, your Metapixel, a any of LinkedIn Insights, any of these pieces that are tracking user information to and from your site, you just want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence and that you're covered. Okay, excellent. And when we come back after these words, we're going to learn all about IT in the workplace when we return. If you've got an innovation that you want to bring to the world, the first step is making sure you've got a great domain name. Visit shop.spacehost.pro to grab your domain name today and begin your new venture and your new business. Shop.spacehost.pro. Your program manager of information technology at the workplace. Yes, sir. Awesome. Well, tell us how you got there. Well, I've been in IT for 20 years, so I got my first IT certificate when I was at Bunnell High School. Um, I got my A-plus certificate. Shout out to the Bulldogs. Shout out to the Bulldogs, Benel Bulldogs, class of 2001. Nice. So I'm dating myself. Boo. Oh, <laughs> oh no. You got, you got Red Devils, Red Devils. in, in the oh, studio. Devils. So. <laughs> oh, no, it's no problem. You know, it's, we beat you all a lot of times during the Thanksgiving <laughs> game. So we always had the great football players will say, like, shout out to Shannon James, who, who played really well. And got man, just the, the fact that you know, do you just... Man, all right, you can just put a couple of points back in the box. All well, right. thank you, thank you. <laughs> Bunnell stole all the South End's good players. Well, I'm from in the, the name of diversity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stole all their good athletes oh. in the name of diversity. Well, I'm from the South End, Stratford. So yeah. and they, so and you should, you really should have been going to Stratford High. You're absolutely correct. Dover Street, and then they <laughs> said we used to bus us a half hour all the way uh, over to Bunnell High School or into Flood Middle School, mm -hmm. just because of like you know uh, um, some equi racial equity. Right. right. So somehow they got all the athletes though. They got, all the, they, got all, they got all the people in sport. You know, the decision sport. makers were like, all right, we'll agree to this, but, but here's, yeah. here's, here's what we want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're looking for a particular type. <laughs> like, can you jump? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you run? All right, we, oh, all right. we got you. Yeah, get, get that kid with asthma out of here. No, no, no. He's going oh, to yeah. Strapper High. Oh, no, no. no. You're a little too short here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's, your, what's the BMI weight class? You know, yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, man. So, no. so so good. So you played ball. I played ball, and I was a martial artist. So I was a, a martial arts champion as well. So nice. again, they put they they were pulling out people that can do a lot of stuff. So I was a multi athlete. So I played basketball, ran track, and I was a martial arts champion. But then I had a um, a advisor that said, "Well, you know, you can't do this forever. You may get hurt." And he jinxed me. I messed up my knee, so I couldn't oh, do that. Man. <laughs> he said, "So now since your knees messed up, why don't you go take some IT course?" I was like. <laughs> Okay, we'll see. So you're smart. I'm like, I'll do it. So mm -hmm. I you did. You pivoted to the exact opposite. You went from jock to geek, like a, like a, a whole. No, I did like a 360. I was like, I was yeah. like the jock driving a nice car, and I'm like, oh, I'm a geek with a nice car. So hey, <laughs> man, I, I, hey, I'm all we, for it. That's it's what the, we do. I mean, multi-dimensional, multi-dimensional. And then once I got that certification, I was able to go to Norwalk Community College. Um, and then got two degrees from there, and then in information technology, and then information systems, computer security. Then I went to UConn, 
shout out to UConn, UConn Stanford, and UConn Waterbury, and got my degrees there. Nice. So, so I have a minor in women's studies, so now that's why I have a good marriage with my wife. I've been married for almost like. A, Policy. Almost fifteen years. So having that women's studies really helps me out. So you read all these books just to just to come to the you know the conclusion. They're always right. They're always right, yes. I mean <laughs> <laughs> And I have a degree in that. I have a degree. I like, I have a degree. He reads all these books and at the end it's like conclusion. You know, they're always right. They're always right. That's disagree. Like, that's in the cliff note too. Like you gotta be able to have that was part of the thesis. <laughs> the woman is always right. And <laughs> then that's why I don't sleep on the couch. Exactly, <laughs> or the doghouse, or the doghouse, or outside in the porch. You know, <laughs> you know, I don't want that. My daughter can't have me like doing that. So from there, I started working for the city of Bridgeport. Mm-hmm. I was a intern. I was their first successful internship from Norwalk Community College that went into a government program. So I basically did the mainframe operations. I did the break fix of being a tech work. Then I always became their server manager. I was managing the servers for the fire department. Um, I was doing the o, um, for the EOC, emergency management system. I handed all the heating and air conditioning systems from the IT level. And then I got the call to go to Yale University, where I managed the IT for the Child Study Center, Emergency Medicine. And then I used to head the COVID testing and vaccination center for all the IT around the whole university itself. And then I was being called for in in regards to the hospital because I was the first to start um, doing telehealth when tele- before telehealth became very popular at that point. Mm-hmm. I worked with Dr. Lane Taylor um, to help pass legislation to make telehealth um, billable under your insurance. Because the insur- um, Connect is the insurance state, but a lot of times they didn't want to bill to have you be at home and talking mm-hmm. to your doctor. So I worked with um, Dr. Lane Taylor and others to get that bill passed and other great um, politicians as well. Nice, nice. And I noticed that that's a feature now on many uh, insurance plans. That yes. You, that you get, you know, some of them have like unlimited telehealth visits versus you know to, to encourage you to do that instead of walking in yeah because they they before they were more about to say you gotta see your doctor but right. now but you know for psych, psychiatry and for other places it makes it makes it much more sense and but because Connecticut was behind the eight ball other mm-hmm. states were doing it for years they had bluetooth heart monitors you can be at your house and they'll be able to see what's going on with you mm-hmm. and then we weren't there but then the pandemic actually was like a way of pushing everything forward accelerated it or yeah. catalyst was a catalyst to it. So now everyone's able to see their doctors online. They'll be able to um, enjoy that. And then I was able to write the standard for them to do their work from home from, at Yale. So I basically say, okay, well, this is what you need to do to how to work from home successfully. Um, what kind of, because everyone had their internet, right? So mm-hmm. people had horrible internet. So I had to tell them about, you rent that box you have from your internet service provider. I said, turn off. I said, how do we get a new one? I'm like, unplug it, call from your cell phone, say it's broken. Tell them, to te- <laughs> t- tell them to test it and they'll say it's broken, they'll send you a new one. And then we're getting them new boxes. What kind of cameras oh, like you with, need? A, with like a higher speed. Higher speed, like upgrade. yeah. Upgrade. Yeah, because they would have the box for like 10 years. They're right. like, oh, I had the box for 10 years and now I can't do anything. I'm like, well, because you were not at home mm-hmm. and now you're home all day, you're losing your mind, you're seeing like your YouTube video going like a crawl. Mm-hmm. But now you're there and then that's just basically told them how to get them get them to that kind of way and get them to a the better standard. And then got um, published a couple of times with some doctors in regards to... Um, not just telehealth, but um, we had Dr. Um, Rachel Dreyer uh, was working with her with a software called Miro. It's a basic digital therapy for people that was actually being um, tested out at the VA and, you know, um, before my injury. And I, um, it was a very proud moment because I was able to mentor her how to write a business plan, how to go do the, uh, a presentation, not academic pr- uh, presentation, but a business presentation. Mm-hmm. They're doing that elevator pitch. And then she wasn't, you know, she wasn't used to that. And a lot of the doctors used to say, well, they don't teach us this in school. I'm like, no, they want you to be um, charging people, for, charging their insurance. I said, they're not wanting you to start your own business. So mm-hmm. really trying and it, during that time, I was doing a lot of um, influencing at that point, not just doing technology, but in business side and um, being mentors to them in different ways. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, when was your first, you know, uh, engagement with Workplace? Because, I mean, we love we love uh, Joe Carbone and, and, and Tom Long and now John Lee is over there. Uh, just some really good people. So many good programs. Um you're now in charge of the Tech Ready Career Training Program? Yes, sir. And again, you spoke about great people. Mm-hmm. And when we forget it, we don't, we should not forget Miss Adrian Parkman, who is my boss, the CEO. Yes. I always say that those are like the gurus that keep and basically keep everything the lights going on. Um, I came to the workplace um, in November. So I only been there for about six months. Okay. Um, we, we were supposed to do is create a, um, under the Good Jobs Challenge grant, we have uh, training programs 
that are going to be job specific. So what the industry is looking for and then be able to get people industry standard certifications doing training for three months. And then we go there to pipeline them into employment. So what I did is that I looked at a lot of the Gartner reports and other um, uh, economic reports for labor. Kind of like forecasting what the trends are. And yes, where sir. The needs, where, do you, where do you see the biggest gaps? Biggest gaps is cybersecurity. Biggest gaps is in programming, like in Python. And then the next one's going to be big is to be generative AI. Um, that's going to be huge due to how the market is looking at it. Um, in regards to marketing, go in regards to like chatbots, and if you're going to Python, you're looking at large language models because those that language and, and actually C sharp are the ones that are going to be the used to program those large language models. And then IT security, because as we are going more into more in, into technology, we need more personnel that can actually handle it. We don't have enough people that are, are um, actually certified that can handle. It. They've been maybe doing it for years, but there's so many different certifications and so many different organizations need different personnel to handle. Those task right absolutely and so what are some of the uh success stories in in the six months that you've been there have you is it a, a quarterly cohort is it monthly like how often do you have uh, people coming in so we have people coming in quarterly and then people are signing up every every single day so we have um basically have some high schools so right now we have fairchild wheeler they're going to be finishing their a plus comptia a plus certification and then from that point, they'll have be able to become um, desktop technicians, help desk um, analysts. And then thinking about this, being at 18 years old, coming out of high school, and you can make over $50,000 a year. Um, and, this, and, and it's a really big thing. And a lot of times, some people don't pass their tests. And one of the biggest things I've learned is that for the high schools, I use the model called the Groundhog's Day method. The Groundhog's Day method is that I pop my head in your class and, hey, it's Mark. And they see me with my bald head. And I'm like, I'm here to help you and, mm -hmm. and basically give them more encouragement, right? Mm -hmm. Have them meet with their employer and basically say that there's someone there that actually cares that, you know, it's, it's beyond their school. I'm, just, I'm not telling them just to sign up for a program. My thing is to be in um, – basically embedded into their success. So, um, you know, they took their first test. We have 12 kids in the cohort, but you know how a lot of kids are. They forget their identification. But then five of them took the test, and then three of them passed, and that's 60%. And then the other two that failed, they only failed by about a couple of points, and they get to do the test over again. So now I get to tell their employer, and when they take their second test, they're ready to go get a job when they get their certification. And now that cohort is now growing from 12 to 50 Wow. 50 will be in September. And if our Dell cohorts, we're helping out a lot of UConn students. My alma mater, um, a, a young lady that was a in the championship team for three or four years in a row, um, graduated with her bachelor's degree, can't get a job. So what we did is that I met with her, and she actually teaches my daughter basketball. And I said, well, we're going to get you a project management certificate. Because I said there's a need in, in project management, even in IT security. They need a lot of high um, project managers. So I said, we're going to get you this class. She's almost done. So when she gets from there, she already has an employer ready to, to have her hired. And then we have another young man that has been doing IT security for CompTA Security Plus. But I said, okay, you have the security side. But again, you want to become a unicorn. I mean that if you have all these skills, let's get you more certifications. And we'll, we'll basically stack them up so now you're more employable. So now he's going for project management. And then now there's other companies he's already met. I also met with some people that are like I like to call from um, Joe's plan from um, platform to deployment. And these are IT professionals that have been, some of them have been laid off for a while. Some of them have SQL skills, their programming skills. So I get to look at the resume. I'm like, well, where's your portfolio? I said, what do you mean? I said, you have all these certain skills. I said, you have to put it out there right. for the employer to see. And then now they can see all your projects. I said, you, he said, oh, I got my Google Analytics certificate. I said, that's great, but where's the serial number? Oh, I've, I don't know where that is. I'm like, well, I need that. So then now we'll see your portfolio. I said, it's all of it's free because you can go on to Kaggle and then you do something with Tableau. You can go into other sites there that for that for um for database management for um and um, um and GitHub. Take, take note, developers who may yeah. be listening, because this is so important. You'd be amazed. We get a lot of app applicants, and it's amazing how many folks apply without ever being able to showcase any of their skill set. You're absolutely correct. And, and any other certifications and all of that is so incredibly vital. In this industry, so much is about what you can do. Yes. And if I can't see what you can do, you're already behind the eight ball. So there's so much value in everything that you're saying. No, no yeah, thank you so much. It's that a lot of times they don't. And they're like, they're, they have 20 years. I looked at a gentleman's um, resume. I was like, 
I was like, why don't you have a job? And he was like, oh, I don't, I don't have this kind of thing here. I said, well, let's do this. I said, you've been in, he said, you're, you've been doing all parts of IT. Let's get you a management certificate. Mm -hmm. Or let's go get you a Python certificate. He's like, really? I said, yeah, well, now let's get you that certificate. We so you're you doing so like counseling this too. This is another like, yeah. interesting thing. So <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here in that we have, have so many life connections that are going through a similar journey. So A, great to know that they can turn. There's a place they can turn. But I am seeing a lot of folks in the Python space yes. in particular. And a, a bunch of our colleagues have kind of come to Kevin and I and say, hey, can you help me with this side or the other thing? And it's interesting in that um, I, I'm just curious to see if that is a skill set that is particularly being demanded. So you're seeing that from employers. So then you're passing that down to potential applicants. Yes. Or is that okay? So really, it's a, th that is demand based. That's a that's great point, based. though, because it sounds like you said it's a pipeline. But are, are the employer like which? Can you name some of the employers that have partnered with this program? Of course. So what I did is that I've learned that a lot of times when you're applying to certain jobs. And if you go to some like um, state um, organizations, they'll say, "Oh, we're ready to we're ready to hire people." They're they're not doing it. Um, so what I did is that I learned where these um, companies actually get their employees from. And because I used to work at Yale University, they used to use um, tech systems. So they use IT staffing companies to okay. put these pipeline these people in. Reason being because then they can vet the people. Right. But then at that point, they can get them into the mantra of their business. So I made a partnership with a lot of them. I made a partnership with Alano Dubois from Tech Systems. I made a partnership with um, some Benchmark IT and CFS Technologies. So at then at that point, I said, I have something that you will, you guys ha want, certified employees. A lot of times people have bodies in their companies, but they don't have certified personnel. Right. And, and I said, well, I'll go and train your individuals as well and get them certified. And then we can, so it's a win-win for everybody else. Because if they're going to go against someone like myself that has 20 years experience, it's not going to happen. But if they get you to a tech staffing agency, they can come with that um, narrative, help them out there with their soft skills, and then get them into that job. So they're there for six months or seven months or a year or two years. Like say for Yale University. You know, if you're in Yale University, you'll, if you're a tech, you'll, be, you'll go into most likely a, a union called Local 34. Under Local 34 contract, if you're there for six months, you had to be hired. So, and I was a local 34 member. So if I have someone going in there, I'm going to call the union and say, hey, there's, there's a person been here for six months. You need to hire this person. And they go down there and that person get hired. So, and other places are going to be keen to do that. So but this is my knowledge of understanding how these people would be getting in. Because if you see from like, from the papers and some social media and everything else, everyone's applying, but they're not getting the job. Mm -hmm. And because it's the, the, the um, system is so saturated, but they just don't understand that companies have used different use tech staffing agencies. Raytheon Technologies does it. They have a, they use the same tech staffing company that IBM uses to get people staffed in yeah. into employment. So we have, I think for in the tech side, we have to become more savvy and getting ourselves in. And plus now, a lot of um, companies are using generative AI like ChatGPT to go over your resume. So they'll take your resume and then put it in there and say, per these things, should I hire this person? And uh, they'll say no. So now the Could hiring. Can you imagine the AI is deciding whether you get a job or not? Right, listen. Machines are already. It's already do, It's already <laughs> happening it. where you can you can see, yeah, the big boys, like the Indeeds of the world. Yeah. They are touting their AI systems yes. that are supposed to guarantee you. Yeah, uh, a worthy candidate. Yeah, I mean, a human a hasn't been time. looking at people's cover letters for for a long time. Yeah. Um, something that you mentioned, too, about Python being popular. I have a feeling that's only going to increase uh, because the government released a list of memory safe uh, programming languages mm -hmm. because they noticed, I think, over 70 percent of these vulnerabilities, like these large scale um, kind of, you know, hacks and data breaches uh, were because of memory related errors. Yep. So. They now have a recommended list of program limiters. Like these are memory safe. We recommend you build software in these. And I'm like, if it's a recommendation now, I can only imagine in the future it's going to be a requirement. You know, where it's like, yes, right. oh, you want to work with us? You want to implement this software? It's got to be written in one of these memory safe languages because they're not even going to take the risk. No, they won't. And then a lot of times um, you have your Microsofts, you have your Googles, you have your AWSs. And if you go to Microsoft's training that they have, they'll say the language that they're doing it. They'll either say JavaScript, C sharp or Python. 
So then these are being programmed there. So then I'm saying, like, well, let's give everyone access to get able to get, get this training. But if I look into generative AI, I had a conversation with um, one of the career development people from Novans, and I said to him, I said, we want to train everyone in, in generative AI because they're scared. I said, no, the thing you need to be scared about is the responsible part of it. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, that's the efficacy of things. I said, you're going to need someone that understands that to tell your general counsel when you guys get sued. And he said, well, what, what do you mean? He said, we have um, these EMRs, these electronic medical records that do AI. So I said, who's program programming that? Does that person have a bias? Does this person has something where if, because um, if you look at the uh, minority community, they and, um, they have, it's basically seen that they had bad healthcare outcomes due to some bias. Um, I think it was, I, I, I probably had to quote me on it. Um, it was like from 2015 where they showed that for African-Americans, they had a higher pain threshold. So then they had to change that in their medical books. But who's programming that? Is that still in the books? Right. You know, so those are kind of things that where um, if you don't have that person that's looking at responsible AI and you have a person that's a family member that actually looks it up, say, well, why is this outcome happening? I want to see what happens in the large language model. You need to provide that. And the, and, the, and the providers of that, like the Microsoft, the uh, IBMs, the Googles, are leaving it to the companies to come up with these um, standards because they know what's going to happen. So they, a lot of the trainings we take, they're like, well, it's up to you, the organization, to come up with these things. And then now we are all want to get into it, but we're not looking at that. And that's where the personnel is going to be needed for that part. So a lot of these things that you learn from generative AI, from IT security, you're gonna there, there's going to be a big boom coming up within five to six years. Everyone thinks like, you know, we're all happy to see these nice AI-generated videos or, you know, they're doing these certain things. The real nitty-gritty is going to be where the compliance part where, so that's where your IT security comes in, where you have like com you have a compliance offer with a security pl um, security plus certificate, or you'll have someone that knows how to program and knows about IT security and be able to say, well, uh, we're having this problem here. What we're going to do? We're going to get sued. And I told them, I said, well, you're going to need to buy more insurance then, won't you? Because if you don't handle this, I said, I can see multi-million dollar losses coming in because now everything's digitized. So they can't say, well, let's go and um, – delete anything or I mean like to sh shred up any papers it's going to be in a large language model that might be stored at Microsoft might be stored at Google so a person can go and say do a subpoena and they'll have to release those records so you know it's the whole business of programming security and then regular tech work will still be there and um, project management is going to be big especially for the IT security field I talked to one of the um, a, comp a guy that has a is a CEO of a security company he says we need project managers so that's going to be big and, and and the biggest thing they said for people graduating college is they're saying they're graduating but they don't have the skills that we need to hire them so a lot of college graduates are actually underemployed due to that. I just have um, a person that's from Trinity Health that just signed up. I was just coming down from Waterbury, and she was a coordinator. But she says, I'm only making $23 an hour. And she, and, you know, she says, I'm not economically safe. So I look at economically safe saying that she might go homeless and have a job. And we're seeing that more. People have a full-time job and they're becoming homeless. So I said, well, why don't you Try our project management class. It's like, well, how long is the class? I said, well, this class lasts a little bit longer. It's a little bit five months, all online. And once you finish, like, it's no cost to you. We, you know, the certification is going to be paid for. The class is going to be paid for, and we'll do support services. And I said, just remember, you'll have someone like me that's going to be calling you every week, saying how you're doing. Um, you know, it's basically me because uh, I'm the one man show there. So I, I, I said, I'm going to be calling you. I'll be knowing, I'll know when you're in your class, why you haven't attended your class. You know, and I always tell every um, participant, I am, I say, I look forward to hearing about your success, right? For me, I'm looking at it as I've been in the game, been in the IT game for over 20 years and now I'm able to give back to people because I say I could use my knowledge to give them a chance and be able to give something where I didn't have that chance. I had to pay out my own pocket. Mm -hmm. So and now this is uh, a program that usually doesn't come out so long, but the government puts out these programs because they, you know, done their forecast and they know what's coming. So, the, you know, it's either that or we go back to what I like to call uh, what Andrew Yang talked about, the universal basic income that will end mm -hmm. up coming up pretty soon if we don't get our, uh, get our people um, certified and, and um, in place. So you you earned the moniker the Godfather of telemedicine. Yes, I did. <laughs> like the Godfather of Harlem. 
That you Delane know. Taylor gave me that name. She yeah. she said, I don't, and for me, you know, I can't be the Godfather. I don't have a cape and I don't have any hair. So <laughs> it's like, I can't slick my hair back. You Everyone did have hit, a cane though. I did have a cane. I did. I had a cane, but I, you know, I couldn't throw my cane and do a little <laughs> shimmy, right? And that, oh, that, no. that would have been, that would have been great. I had a cane, but. You're not a Kappa, are you? No, not Kappa. Okay, okay, okay. That's what they do. No, 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 no. But, but, uh, but anyway, so this is, this is a program under the Good Jobs Challenge grant. And, yeah. and, um, how long is that or what happens when that grant, you know, gets exhausted? So that's the big thing for the grant. We had to find ways to keep it going. So mm. for the youth, I've partnered with um, – this is the great thing about the workplace. It's a one-stop shop of right. services. Right, because you've got Engage. You've got uh, uh, all these different um, – Dress for Success. It, yes. there's, all, there's all these uh, integrated programs there. Um, even uh, the, the unemployment office is somehow – connected to the workplace. Yeah, like the American Job Center. Right. And I did is that I worked with um, our VP of Youth Services, Kathy, Miss Kathy, and under Better Futures, we can continue that for the young people going mm. up to 24. Now I'm still figuring out everything else out for the older adults and then seeing how we can partner with other organizations to actually yeah. pay for these certifications. Because a lot of times what happens is that when you're at your job, they pay for training, but they don't pay for certificates. So they give you the certificate, right. the, the certificate of completion saying, hey, here's my T-shirt. And I just did this thing. But the reason why they don't do it is because if they gave you this certificate under their HR policy, they have to give you more money. Got it. Got it. Excellent. So what is the ideal candidate, you know, for this? And what do you say to, to a young person that is uh, thinks they might not be good at math or thinks that, they, that, you know, this isn't for them? Yeah. How do you encourage them? So a lot of times when I do my presentations, I talk to them for a little bit, and then I, I create an AI-generated video, and I always say, um, either you can look at my bald, shiny bald head for the next eight minutes or we can watch this video. <laughs> um, you know, And they watch the video, and then I start talking to them. I said, let's, let's talk about your skill sets. Um, and I always say, let's pick the lowest hanging fruit, right? A-plus is kind of the low hanging fruit. Um, if you're like a young high school kid, because it doesn't require a lot of math, it doesn't. It requires some reading, but some it doesn't require like high level math. And then as we build on, we can say, well, we can go to security. It doesn't hire a lot of a um, lot of math, but requires some reading. And then you get to learn. It, it, I always believe too. Once you get one certificate, you, it builds up the confidence. Right. But the biggest thing for like the younger person, you have to be able to be on them and talk to them in a way, kind of like a mentor um, and being there to talk to them. And and I, one of the biggest things I was very cr proud to hear was that when the kids at Fairchild Wheeler were going to take their test, they said, oh, we don't want to let Mr. Lazarus down. Awesome. And it was because of my engagement. I used to say, mm -hmm. oh, like, listen, I'm not the weird ball guy just showing up poking my head doing this way. I said, I'm here to make sure that you are successful because I want to show, want you to know that I'm, I care about your success. Yeah. I care about you doing well because I don't want you to be um, underemployed. I don't want you to um, go to college and then not able to pay for it. You don't have any money because life happens. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be I want you to be able to live a life, the American dream that was promised. Right. What about wraparound services such as so they learn the skills, but I'm sure some of these some of these young people and I'm sure there are adults that want to yeah. change careers that come in. Um do you also do like interview uh, prep or yes. like how to how to present yourself? Because it, it, the stereotype of the coder is that they're not very that they're more introverted. Yes. So tell us a little bit about some of those other wraparound services. So we have a lot of wraparound services. If you don't, if you can't get a laptop, we can be able to provide you a laptop. If you're internet stress, we can provide you with some with a, with, with internet. And for those interview um, skills, that's why the workplace is such a great place because we have areas where the people they can go to and I can pipeline them to to get those interview skills, to get those kind of like, hey, how you're supposed to dress. Um, and a lot of times I'm usually talking to them all the time, it's like saying how your resume is supposed to look, how how you're if you're a programmer or you're doing data analytics or you're doing a plus how to make it make it sure where your your resume makes sense right so sometimes someone puts a resume is like it's just a whole bunch of garble and you're like <laughs> what's going you just throw your hands up because you don't know what to do mm -hmm. so basically that's where the i have the great pleasure of working at the workplace because i can easily pipeline them to different areas so where they get the best services and then they have the best results all right this sounds amazing so how does somebody sign up or learn more well they can go to the go to workplace org slash tech ready career training program and then they'll go down they'll see the ai generated video and they'll see the button for the sign up usually when you sign up you'll hear from me within 48 hours awesome well mark thank you for being here this is amazing work you're doing for folks that want to get into the tech space and get a job 
This is great and another testament of the amazing work being done at the workplace. So thanks for being here. Well, thanks for thank you for having me. And I would like to say thank you to Mr. Joe Carbone and Ms. Adrian Parkman for giving me the chance to serve the people. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of Mission Control. Until next time, this is your host, Ramon Peralta with Peralta Design, and we launch brands. <laughs>